Hey React Native friends, what's up? Simon here from Galaxies.dev back with a new React Native Essential. Today we're taking a look at platform specific code. That means platform specific components, layouts and styling. We're gonna dive into the platform API, how you can create different components for different platforms, native, web, iOS, Android, and also take a look at a few edge cases like platform colors that you can use and even a short look at the new Expo UI package, which is like the ultimate thing to use platform primitives in your application from Swift UI and Jetpack Compose. If you not only want to learn about platform specific code, but how to ship your full React Native application, check out galaxies.dev and our new Zero to Hero mission and use the code Essentials for a nice little discount. Code below this video, and now let's dive into this. So I've already created my new Expo application and I run the reset script. So I right now only have an index file and a layout file right here uh, with my app. I also opened, app, uh, opened up this app on pretty much every platform that I could. So I have an Android emulator, I have an iOS simulator, and I can also open this up on the web. As you can see, three handy views, and we can now look at all of them, and we want to customize each of them. So let's start with the easiest possible way to do that. There is something called the Platform API. With a Platform API from React Native, you can simply check on which platform your device or your application is running. We're gonna use this and just create a little text here maybe on that page. Uh, let's get rid of a couple of things here. So we could now say if the platform dot operating system, and we see there are a couple of other things like is TV, is testing, but we're gonna check if the platform operating system is equal to one of those. Let's say iOS, then I want to render the text. Uh, I am an iOS box. All right. In the other case, do we have like, yeah, let's make this a question mark here. And then as the fallback for this one, you can have a different text. Like I am the generic one. I am, uh, I am a box. All right. We need to accordingly close this. Did we add the platform yet? Yes. Uh, but this is of course not required. So with that in place, let's check out the app. So we see Android, I am a box, web, I am a box, iOS, I am an iOS box. So this is like the easiest way and you can do this check in pretty much every place of your application. Also in functionalities, if you want to trigger the camera or something different, you can make it quick check for platform operating system. If this becomes a bit bigger and you want to target multiple platforms, something a bit more handy is actually platform.select. So with platform.select, you can create an object and within that object, you can have iOS, Android, default, uh, web windows and you could just specify the component that should be rendered on that specific platform. So in this case we should see that for Android we now have an Android box, we have an iOS box and for the web we still have the default box because I think I didn't make anything else for that. So these two are the essentials uh, for making a little split, uh, split, like branching out in your code, branching in some views. But overall, this can get messy in many scenarios. So this is really only the basic way it can work, but let's take a look at a couple of other options that might be more suited for your apps. So instead of using the platform switch, you can also have platform specific components by using a platform specific extension. Let's see this in action by creating a new folder. I'll call this components. And in here, I wanna have a box component. So I will call this box.tsx. Uh, I'll bring in some code. So this is just a simple styling for a box. Don't mind that it's called webbox. We can also call it box. I can now use this box in my component here. So simply put in my box component. And now of course the box component would render the same on all three platforms. So now I could go ahead and say, hey, I maybe want to have this differently for iOS. So let's do a box.ios.tsx. In here, we're just going to do a slight variation. And I also probably want to have it differently on Android. So let's also add a box.android.tsx. Those three files in place, let's check again. Um, okay, we should probably do a... Okay, never mind. I just had to restart my uh, expo command. So now we do have an Android box. 
We do have an iOS box and we do have a web box. All three have different borders and a different text in them. And we can simply achieve this every time for every kind of component by just having a platform specific extension. You can, by the way, also have a .native extension or a .web extension. That would be something else. So let's bring in something else here to my component. Maybe uh, we're gonna have a settings page as well in our app. And that settings page should probably look different for native than it looks in the default case. Now, here's a little trick. In many cases, you not only want like one component in this file, but you actually want that whole file to be uh, that component, if that makes sense, kind of like the whole page. Let's do this as a test. Let's do a settings.tsx here. And this could be by default our settings page. Uh, let's say we can just uh, go there with a link command. Okay, I'm the settings page, I'm the settings page, and I'm the settings page. Uh, did we add that? Yeah. So this is the default way of displaying that settings page. Now, what if we wanted to have a certain native settings page? Could also be, of course, an Android page or an iOS page. In that case, you could comment out everything in that page here, because what you can't do with Expo Router is have a player or have platform specific extensions here in your app folder. So everything in the app folder is picked up as a route. That means I can't do settings.ios.tsx in here. That just wouldn't work. Instead, we can now use a command. We can use export default from our component. So from add components, uh, what was it? Add components. Thanks for no code completion today. I didn't need that, right? Settings and then page. And once we do this, we're now exporting a different version. So if I go to settings here, I am now the native settings page. Uh, right here, we're still the default settings page. And if I reload my iOS application, I should also see that I am the native settings page. So with this simple uh, line up here, you can have your platform specific code for your platforms. You don't need all of this in here. You don't need platform select something. You don't and you can't have a platform specific file. But what you can have is that default export that points to your component that is then using a platform specific file like iOS, Android, web or native. So far we've talked a lot about platform specific extensions and files and components, but you can also map that behavior to styling. So in my index page, let's add a simple style sheet down here. React Native style sheet. Uh, where's my shortcut? Here we go. For a style sheet and bring that in from React Native. Now in here, I probably want to target or create a specific styling for my text component. So the text component should maybe have always a font size of 20. But then the color should actually be different depending on the platform. So we can now combine the APIs we had before and do the spread operator on the platform dot select and then create an object that targets the different platforms. So I could have now iOS on iOS. The color should be, I don't know, maybe red. And then we can create that for multiple platforms. So we do this for Android. Android is maybe, I don't know, green. And then we have a default or web, and that's gonna be uh, black. So let's see, once we got this, we should see that we have blocked 500,000 ads for you. Thank you, that's amazing. Uh, and application isn't really reloading. Did we assign, oh, we should probably assign that styling somewhere, right? That makes sense, yeah. Let's say I am the header up here. So with that in place, we see already the header up here on this one, we're still there. So now we're on the base page and Android is now also. Okay, green header, red header iOS, black header web. And all of this can be achieved by a combination of using the platform select in your style sheet. Of course, there could be also in other uh, ways. You could also probably have a CSS file at some point or import uh, a style sheet that you generated somewhere. But this is one of the easiest ways to have a quick separation between the platforms. If you wanna take this one step further, there is actually an API called platform color that you can use. I honestly haven't used that a lot because I don't know, I just wanna use my colors and not the platform colors. But with this one, 
you can actually look up specific colors for iOS and Android and then use them in your project. I don't really like the Android documentation. It, it never feels good. I can't see anything, but Apple is also not a whole lot better. I don't really see anything about these colors. But nonetheless, the platform color does exist and I quickly want to give you a showcase of what it does. So instead of saying iOS is red, we could now say platform color and then give it a name for that string. So this could be system blue, for example. And for Android, I could use something like an Android color holo blue bright. So let's go back and we see Android, quite the bluish thing, uh, whatever that is. Here we got the system blue and on web we have an issue. That actually surprised me because uh, we can have in that function a fallback for default or web and that's not using platform color. So right now I'm not exactly sure why it fails. Platform color does not exist on the web. I'm fine with that, but I'm not using it on the web. So I don't know why this code is still picked up for the web and brings us problems. So be a bit careful with that platform color. But otherwise, this is an additional way of having separation between the platforms and actually using their primitive colors. Another really helpful way for platform specific code is to actually have platform specific layout files. This is especially helpful if you're developing for the web as well. I will now comment this out because I want to make sure my web version works again and I will restructure my application a bit. So I will put my index and settings into an app folder and just have uh, the stack up here. And now let's bring in a default layout. So a simple Expo Router tab bar. But maybe for iOS, I actually would like to use my new unstable native tabs from Expo Router. By the way, this will change once this becomes a stable API. This is displaying a real native tab navigator on iOS. And as you can see, I said before you can't have platform extensions here with Expo Router. Well, for layout files, you actually can. So now we should see that for Android, we have this default Expo Router tab bar, classic one. But on iOS, I actually got the Glass UI native tab navigator here on my iOS 26 simulator. Additionally, tabs on the web, that's always a really bad idea and it always looks horrible. So what if we had a web layout? Well, just go ahead because the cool thing is this layout only targets web and with Expo Web, you can actually use CSS and HTML elements in here. So you see, I got my div, I got a header set up with some links, I got my main slot that actually renders the content and I have a footer as well. All of this inside the specific layout.web.tsx. As a result, we can now see I have a pretty cool top navigation here on the web that I can use and I have my native tabs here on iOS and if they work on Android we can even have them on Android as well. We can actually use them already in this version. Uh, I just didn't like the way we had to include additional material icons because the Android icons sucked and uh, yeah, it kind of flashes a bit. I don't know. I don't feel really great about that yet, but it would give us native tabs on Android as well. This is a powerful tool, probably even more powerful than the platform specific um, components because with this one, it opens up a whole new door for uh, web layouts that you can create. On Android and iOS, you probably don't have a different layout, but you could still have a native layout and a web layout. And then you don't need any kind of ugly platform switches and you can just feel free in what you do by targeting the web platform with these additional components. Okay, here's one last thing that I wanted to show you. This is like the ultimate platform specific code because here I added a new page called experiment. The setup in my application isn't too super interesting, but what I'm doing here is I'm importing a bunch of stuff from the new Expo UI Swift UI package as well as modifiers from Swift UI. This is taken straight from the documentation of Expo UI and what this package allows you is to pretty much use Swift UI and Jetpack components right in your application. So what you see on this screen, this is not CSS, this is not React Native. These are actual native views that I'm using in my application. This package is still in beta stage, so be careful when using this. 
And of course, this page here, because we're importing from SwiftUI, would only work on iOS. That means, ultimately, I would also have to have another Android page on which I use the Jetpack Compose uh, uh, components. And they might be different, because, of course, Jetpack Compose does have different components. So iOS might have, like, a, a specific button or circular progress or color picker. And on Android, they're simply not the same element. So right now, as I'm using this, um, there are already a bunch of things included that you can use from both SwiftUI and Jetpack Compose in your application. Just be careful that these now really have to be platform specific files, otherwise uh, you're gonna get into a lot of trouble if you try to import SwiftUI in an Android uh, application. <laughs> as well as uh, the APIs here might really change in the future. And for the moment, Swift UI was the main focus of the Expo team to simply expose all the primitives that Swift UI um, offers. Is this something you have to use? Of course not. And some people said, no, this completely eliminates the idea of React Native and having cross-platform pages. And yes, that's true. But in some cases, you really want to have a certain native look and feel for a page. And therefore, you're not limited with React Native or Expo. No, instead, you really have the ability to dive deeper into this, not only with platform specific layouts and components and extensions, but really getting the native views exactly like they are for native developers. All right, that's it for a quick overview about the options you have when you want platform specific code. Remember, the platform API is your basic friend. You can have platform specific extensions, iOS, Android, web, native, and you can also have platform specific layout files. And ultimately you will have access to Expo UI and the platform primitives that are really the foundational blocks for iOS and Android applications. I hope this essential was a good overview for you. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below and let me know what you would like to see in one of our future essentials. Check out galaxies.dev and use the code essential if you want to get a nice discount. I'll hopefully catch you in the next video. So make sure you hit the like button and stay subscribed and I will catch you then. So until then, happy coding, Simon.